And then on Build, Build Back Better, um, CNBC and Change Research conducted a poll in late December asking various demographics about some of the legislation that's been proposed, the state of the economy. Pure independence, the group of voters that secured the election for President Biden, they give the president a D across the board on economic issues, and only 30 percent say that Build Back Better will grow the economy and create jobs. What is your own internal polling telling you about whether independents want Build Back Better and whether you should recalibrate for a different set of policy proposals? Well, without getting into internal polling, I will tell you that Build Back Better, as you know, hasn't passed yet. Um, and we are working to get it passed. And what we see in a lot of polling is that people like the components of the pa of the bill, but they don't know exactly what's in Build Back Better and what it means. Um, and it's always easier to sell a package to the public once it's passed. There's a lot of reason to be hopeful in 2020. But I was sitting in my kitchen yesterday, and there's a sunroom off the kitchen, and my wife was there with her sister and a good friend named Marianne, and she was saying, do you realize it's over $5 for a pound of hamburger meat? $5? Well, this is partly, you know, the pound of beef today costs 5 bucks compared to less than 4 bucks before the pandemic. And I want to say a word about where our economy stands today. We're entering 2022 in a position of a unique economic strength. Um, ARP money. Does the White House wish that there was more oversight in where that American Rescue Plan funding went since the president said yesterday that some of the schools have not used it well? And we're seeing in some places like Chicago and Milwaukee, um, some of it's been earmarked for other purposes, including critical race theory. And in Chicago, you've got kids not going back to school now. Well, Jackie, it's always been the case that local school districts uh, make decisions about what is needed for their schools. Different schools make different decisions. What is important for people to understand is that there is some of this funding that hasn't been spent in certain states to put in place mitigation measures. Now is the time to do that. The view of the supply chain task force, have these supply chain pressures peaked? Uh, it's hard to tell uh, if the supply chain pressures are peak, have peaked. Our agreement that the White House had with Walmart and Kroger to sell those rapid tests at cost, did the White House make an effort to extend that agreement? Well, I'm not going to get into details of our private conversations with these providers. It was a set number of, a set period of time. But what's important to, um, for people to understand, or the American people to understand, is that our focus is, of course, ensuring that we are increasing access. I guess the point is those half a billion tests aren't available yet. You can't go on our website and sign up for them yet. You can't receive them yet. You can't yet file a claim with your insurance company to be reimbursed for the tests that people have been buying. And so I'm wondering, since the president has had the CEO of Walmart here at the White House before, they have a pretty close relationship since he took office, why he would not try to extend that agreement that they had with Walmart, that the White House had with Walmart, to keep those tests a little bit less expensive than they already are? Well, I'm not going to detail private conversations, but I will just reiterate that next week people can get reimbursed for their, uh, for their tests. Can you talk about how the president is spending this day in terms of preparing to deliver this speech? How much is he focused on that today? Is he doing dry run-throughs? I mean, obviously, this is a significant moment. Sure. Look, I, I would say first, um, yeah, I know the president doesn't have public events today. He does have a number of uh, meetings with uh policy teams, uh, and that's often what he's doing behind the scenes. If you, if he were standing here today, which I know he's always invited, is what you guys will say, but he would say we never give him any free time or any time to think, um, and that is probably true. So that is a big part of his day today. Uh, he is uh, obviously very personally involved in what, uh, and I think the role of the former president uh, in this, the role, uh, and unfortunately the silence and the complacency of a number of far too many, not every, but far too many member of the Republican Party uh, in the time since then in uh, perpetuating the big lie has stuck with him as well. So I will say, I would say that, of course, he he's involved in the writing of, of any major speech he gives uh, in feedback um, and, and conveying. Does the president think like bipartisanship and relations between the two parties are better or worse off than they were a year ago? 
uh, what is most disappointing uh, to him is that uh, there has been a silence and, a, and at times a complacency by far too many Republicans who have sat by and defended the big lie um, and perpetuated misinformation to the American public. Uh, that is not meant to be a partisan. That is meant to be a statement of fact uh, and an important reminder to people about the history of our democracy in this country. I, want, I will quickly get around to the last two, or last three. Go ahead. Okay, real quick. Um